All right, hey guys, Erica Osborne, Think Real Estate Team, section number three of our kind of our insurance deep dive uh, with Janet McCaskey of McCaskey Insurance, McCaskey and Associates Insurance Agency. Oh, I'm so sorry, Janet. That's okay, it's a mouthful. We're gonna touch on flood right now, and I know we could go into probably an hour long chat on just flood. Absolutely. We are, we are just gonna skim the surface of basics, and then we will lead everyone to you for your flood expertise uh, with some contact information uh, on, on the back side of this. But, okay. all right, so just to, to pop right in, uh, you think your property might be in a flood zone, what do you do? Oh, well, have a good relationship with an insurance agent that can look yeah. it up. Um, I've been running into this a lot lately, especially here in Hampton Roads, the flood zones have changed. And somebody that owns the property may have never had flood insurance, maybe never needed flood insurance. The house is paid off. There's no mortgage. They don't even worry about it. But the new buyer is going to, you know, they come to find out, they get to the closing table and it's in a flood zone. So again, going back to that shop early, um, it takes me about a minute and a half to pull a flood zone to tell you if you're in a flood zone or not. So I can give you a pretty good indication if you need to worry about that going into it. So best thing to do, you can look at the flood maps, uh, try to go to those city websites. A couple of the cities actually have it on their websites now, which is really cool under the city assessments. Um, but again, I wouldn't say how up to date they are. So if it says it's not in a flood zone and you're really concerned, I double check just to make sure. And the best way to do that is just contact an agent and have them check it. All right. So what, um, what is it, what do you look at when you check it? I actually have a carrier that I work through that goes to the FEMA website directly. So I put in some particulars about the house, which is going to be, you know, the, obviously the street address. Um, year built square footage, uh, crawl space, how many floors is it? Is it attached garage? Is there venting? I mean, so it goes into a, a, quite a few different questions. Um, and then it will, I immediately will send, hit send and it'll pop back what zone that it's located in. Sometimes it has been newly mapped. Um, it may not pop back immediately and it might take me 24 to 48 hours to get it back. 99.9% .9 of the time when I have them manually map it, it's in a flood zone. They've moved it to a flood zone. So they're just double checking to make sure that they're giving me the correct information. So they, they, they change them constantly. So it's always good to check. And so um, you hear on occasion people talk about elevation certificates. Can you kind of explain what those are and what they do uh, or what, what they are when it's revolving around flood? Sure, absolutely. An uh, elevation certificate is going to be done by a survey company. It is not something I do. It's not something the mortgage company does. The title company can usually order that for you if you, if you need one done. Um, but an elevation certificate is very specific details on the property. Um, and it's actual, uh, how big the crawl space is, how many uh, vents are there, are the vents uh, smart, it's called smart vent. <laughs> um, are they to code? Are they uh, big enough for the crawl space of the house? It's very, very specific. It'll go into base flood elevation. Um, so there's a lot of information that they're like, oh, I, have, I need an elevation certificate. Can you give me a quote? Well, the cool thing is now there's private market flood and private market flood will run a quote without an elevation certificate. The break point is about 1978. So if the house was 1978 or newer, you're gonna look at needing an elevation certificate to get a quote through FEMA. If it's 1978 or older and you don't have an elevation certificate, I can go to the private market and give you a worst case scenario. If you don't wanna get an elevation certificate, this is what it would cost. And I've actually seen private market coming back a little bit better than FEMA, believe it or not. Um, so it really just depends and I shop it both ways. Um, traditionally, if there is an elevation certificate, you're going to see a better fit um, with going with the FEMA product, just because we have very specific elevation, what the ventings are, whereas the private market, it doesn't ask any of that. It's just based on your flood zone and, and their demographic of, you know, what they're charging. And can you, uh, if, a seller has, um, if a seller has an elevation certificate, can the buyer of a property use that elevation certificate or do they have to get a new one? It depends on how old the elevation certificate is. I can use them, but sometimes things have changed. If it's 20 years old, the zone might have changed. Um, houses settle, elevations change. I mean, so it could not be as accurate as if you had a new one. Um, but yes, we can use an older one as long as I can send it to my underwriting team and they can read it. Um, 
then that's not a problem. With an older certificate, we do have to get current pictures of the house to show that it's not, um, maybe they've added an addition on since that original uh, elevation, elevation certificate was done or added a garage. Um, so all those things can come into play when they're looking at doing the rating for it. Uh, any idea or roundabout of what, how much an elevation certificate uh, costs to have a surveyor do it? And I know this isn't your, you know, that's handled outside, but if you just have a general right. idea. Um, I would say average is four to $450 here in the area. That's a pretty good average. I mean, some will be more, some will be less. Do you need it rushed? Do you not need it rushed? Is it on the peninsula south side? It really just depends. But I would say that's probably a pretty good ballpark, 400, 450 get an elevation certificate done. And so in order to get a true flood quote though, that elevation certificate is what has to happen outside of the private market. Outside of the private market, correct. If the house is 1978 or newer. Okay. So we're gonna to have to have that elevation certificate to go through FEMA. All right. All right, let's see here. What makes one property in a flood zone but the property next to it not in a flood zone or in the same thing? What makes one property need flood insurance versus the property next door not need it? It's location, elevation. Um, you can have two identical houses side by side. One might be elevated five feet higher than the one right beside it. Um, it, it might be closer to a lake than the house beside it. Um, so it really just depends on the location of the property and how it's elevated of whether it needs, you know, it needs the flood insurance or not. Or, and that also will dictate if it does need flood insurance, how much is the flood insurance? If one house is five foot lower than the other, Obviously, the one that's higher up is going to be less expensive, which around here a lot, you see houses sometimes with really large crawl spaces um, or on stilts closer down to the beach, um, you know, garages underneath kind of thing that are open. Um, so they're taking that into account when they're looking at the construction. Ooh, that kind of leads me into my next question. Uh, okay. All right. If you, uh, if you find out your property needs flood, uh, are there things you can do to the property to decrease the amount of flood insurance needed? Absolutely. There are companies out there that does flood mitigation, so they can actually come out, they do an inspection of the property, and they give you some ideas of what could help you. Um, a lot of times adding venting is probably the number one, is adding more venting to the crawl space. Um, smart vents, which are a new vent that they have on the market, they've been around now, well, I don't know, probably eight, ten years, um, but they're really cool that respond to the flow of water, so they will tilt based on the flow of the water, letting the water go out versus just tilting one direction. Um, so it allows water to pass through easily underneath the home. Um, sometimes it's just a matter of bringing in some dirt and doing a fill, depending on the, the location. Um, so yeah, there are definitely things you can do and there's companies out there that will do mitigation. I do not do any of the mitigation thing. That is a separate beast all of it of itself. Um, but a lot of times just merely replacing venting or adding venting, I've seen it, yes, it might cost you two grand to do the venting, but it will cut your, you know, your flood insurance by three grand. So yeah. It's, you know, pay it here, pay it there. But in the long run, it's usually very helpful to have that done. And someone that's an expert in the flood mitigation can give you that information. Great. All right. Man, that knocks out flood for me because I already touched on the uh, elevation certificate. Do you have any additional, uh, if you, like, let's say somebody's doing a rehab and it's in a flood zone, um, like, do they have to get the full-blown flood, like, that flood policy? Or is it going to depend on the lender? It, well, if they have a lender, the lender could require it. If it's a cash deal, then it's up to them. But I would say if they're looking to sell the property, um, once they do the, maybe when they're doing the rehab, take in the mitigation at the time they're doing the rehab because it's easier to do it at that point and go ahead and get an elevation certificate. It'll be more attractive to your buyer that if you can present an elevation certificate that's going to make the flood much less based on you did some fill dirt, you did some smart venting, you added some venting, whatever it is, um, it will help you sell the property afterwards. Um, and for the investors out there, before you see a deal that's too good to be true and you jump on it and pay your cash, double check the flood zones. I've had several come across my desk lately that um, they got a deal just too good to be true. And the reason was is the flood insurance was just horrible on the property. Um, so don't get stuck um, with a property you thought was going to be a flip, which is now going to be a hold because you cannot get rid of the property due to the cost of the flood insurance. So just keep your eyes out out there. Keep your eyes out. Make smart choices, guys. Absolutely. Buyer beware on that one. Yeah, buyer beware all around here. Man, it's uh, coming from Florida, it's not a buyer beware state. Uh, so coming up here, it's a, you have to do a little bit more homework on, on the buyer side just to feel really, I think you should always do homework, blah, blah, blah. I totally understand that. But um, yeah, up here, it's just a little bit of a different story. Don't forget, hurricane season starts June 1. So we are quickly approaching the D-Day on that one. 
Um, and is you know there, what? The world has just been twisted on a bad axis these days. So I don't know what we're going to have with hurricanes this year. So. Absolutely. You never know what's coming up. And speaking of that, uh, what are the rules around um, policies if there's a name storm like in the area? Or what's, isn't there something around that? There is. Traditionally, if you buy a property, um, you purchase flood insurance the day you close. There is no waiting period. If you wait one day, so you bought today and tomorrow you decide you want flood insurance, there's a mandatory 30 day wait. So if there was a hurricane coming in on Saturday and you close today, you better buy it today because if you come back tomorrow, you're going to have a 30 day waiting period and that hurricane's going to roll right on through. Um, so you just, and if you have an existing property, this I, private market, they do have some shorter waiting periods, 10 to 15 days versus the 30 days on FEMA. Um, but you don't want to wait until the last minute to do that purchase because you, you, know, you just don't want to be caught holding the bag. Carriers start shutting down very proactively and very quickly when a hurricane, uh, once we go into a hurricane watch, things start shutting down. Once it's a warning, I can't write anything at all. You can't even get the 30 day wait. So um, they just shut down completely. So make sure you do that a little proactively and, and see what's coming at you. And pay attention. Yep. All right. All right, Janet, that is all I have. Uh, Thank you so much. Can you please tell people how to find you? Because again, you're my go-to gal in the area. So can you please sure. tell people how to find you? Sure. Um, you can always call my office at 757-622-6450. I'm available by email, uh, Janet at McCaskeyins.com. And I'm on Facebook. So you can definitely call, catch me there, McCaskey and Associates Insurance Agency. You can find me on Facebook. And you can always call Erica Force Case House. <laughs> Absolutely. And I will put all the links, all the numbers, all the contact info out when I blast uh, these segments out. So thank you very much again. Thank Jean. you for having me. It was a lot of fun. And uh, if I think of any more questions or if my investors have any more questions, um, I'm probably going to call you and ask you to come on with me again. Sure. We can do a 2.0. No problem. <laughs> all right, Janet. I appreciate it. And thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks.